Alright guys, how's it going? I hope you're doing very well. Quick update on the toothache situation. A couple of hours ago I had my tooth removed. So if I'm talking with a little bit of a lisp more than normal, <laughs> I do apologise. But I want to show you this very quick setup in Octane Render. And it's how to use a gradient map uh, to generate a light, essentially. Now you can do this natively in Cycles. So one of the projects I'm working on at the moment is I have to light a car from underneath. So I need this very circular kind of light. Now there is a few options for lights in Octane. If you actually go to Add, you can see here we have different lights. You have a spotlight, area light, stuff like this. But I'm actually using a mesh. It gives me a little bit more control, if I'm honest. Uh, here is a node setup. If you can't be bothered watching a video, pause it. You're welcome. I'll see you later. But what I'll do here is I'll just quickly hide this object and I'll run through the setup for you. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly add in a mesh and we'll just add in a plane. Now the reason I'm using a plane is because it already has UVs attached. It kind of helps. So I'm going to assign a new material. I'll hit new. What this will do is it'll automatically assign a universal material but I don't want that, I'm going to quickly delete this I press Shift and A and S to search and I'll search for a diffuse material Now the great thing about using a diffuse material gives us a little bit of options to play with so I'll plug this into the surface and then what I'll do is I'll hit this plus sign next to the emission It's quite a handy feature having this plus sign and I'm going to add in a texture and emission here Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down a gradient map so again Shift A, S to search and I'll just search for a gradient map and we'll just plug this into the texture output. Now in order to give this gradient map some sort of kind of influence or basically to tell the gradient map what to do, I'm going to add in a gradient generator. Yeah, a little bit strange of workflow but it kind of gives you a little bit more options if I'm honest. So if I go to gradient generator, I can plug this into the texture and I can input this into the texture. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the gradient type to a radial so we can make a circle. Now, you won't necessarily see something happen or we won't get the effect that we're looking for. So the next thing I need to do is add in a transformation value, pretty much like a mapping node in Cycles or a texture coordinate might be the best way to describe it. So if I actually go to trans, you can see here I have transform value and I'm going to take this texture and I'm going to plug this into the UV transform. Now, I know the rotation for this is 90 degrees in order to make a radial circle. And I know the offset is minus 0.5. Now the reason for this is because we're technically half a metre off of the cube. So we have this kind of nice, strange looking thing. Not perfect. Uh, what I can actually do is change the repetition mode inside of the gradient generator. So this gives us a few options. We can mirror, we can actually clamp the values. But I'm actually going to use white colour. And you can see here we have this kind of black spot. So the next obvious step to do is actually flip the way the colour gradient is working on the, on the gradient map and the quickest way to do this is come to this arrow flip colour ramp and there you go with this nice kind of circular emission now I'll put the power down and what we can actually start to see is we can see a little bit of fall off and we can kind of clamp these colours in just a little bit and maybe add something in the middle so we kind of get a fall off like this and this is great now one thing about doing the UV transformation is when you select the object and you go to move the object it'll disappear and this isn't necessarily what I want, it's not great it's perfect if you're keeping the object right in the centre but what we need to do here is I'm just going to take away the UV transformation and I'm going to do a projection and I'll just hit a plus sign and you can see here it's now given a projection onto the object so no matter where I move the object it should in theory stick to the model now what we can do is we can actually take the transform value and we can plug this back into the transformation now because I've changed the rotations, if I reset this back to 0 and 0, everything's back to normal. And it gives us a little bit more control, so if we want to keyframe something like a scale, like this. We have a little bit more access to controlling lights. And again what we can do is we can spank up the colour. Let's quickly rotate this. And let's just quickly add in an object just to see how it actually looks. Good old default cube will do it. And there you go, we get a nice kind of radial fall off. And obviously if I can scale this up, perfect. So this gives you a little bit more control when creating lights. And obviously this can be attached to a mesh. Any questions, do me a favour, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Yeah, take it easy.